Favorite time of the year in the spring games, right? Uh, a lot of, I would say, instantaneous reactions coming from these games. Always enjoyable to see. Uh, but Clemson was in action. Auburn was in action. NC State was in action over the weekend. And it's a really fun time for us, especially uh, the, the people that really have to do the deep dive uh, on these guys at the high school level. And then we get to see uh, really kind of the first uh, of these guys as they make their way from seniors to freshmen, uh, still navigating the springtime as well. But let's start with Clemson. You watched that game live. I went back through this morning, kind of uh, caught the recap on that. And Drew, I, I just want to mention, I think you used the term crockpot I, earlier in the show. I and I heard that. Dabo. you. I was wondering where that came from. I didn't think that was a coincidence. I heard that from Dabo Sweeney when he was talking about <laughs> Brian Wesco. Um let me say this before we get into Clemson. Dabo Sweeney, I mean, you talk about pure entertainment. The ACC Network had him on the mic on field kind of talking through uh, the entire spring game. Um, not only was it insightful, but, man, uh, you talk about a guy that's got a career in TV waiting for him uh, once his coaching days are done. He's pretty enjoyable there. But, Drew, your overall takeaways uh, from what you saw from the Clemson Tigers this weekend. Well, let's start with Bryant Wesco. And first off, I mean, normally it's like, all right, let him bake in the oven. So I love the crockpot because a little, <laughs> little longer burn there. I'm a, I'm a crockpot guy. I, I do some stuff in the crockpot every, uh, every now and then. Maybe I should say um, throw it in the smoker, throw him on the Traeger, uh, and just let him sit overnight. Uh, Bryant Wesco, Dabo raved about him, had a touchdown catch in the game. Cooper, my instant reaction is, okay, I can't wait for T.J. Moore to step foot on campus there because when we saw Bryant Wesco and T.J. Moore in the final exposure point right before, um, you know, at those All-Star games, I thought it was night and day. I mean, T.J. Moore was kind of the story of the Under Armour All-America game, had multiple touchdowns, over 200 yards receiving, playing opposite of Jeremiah Smith. And Bryant Wesco for us, I think when we showed up in Orlando, it was we were worried about the frame. And just to me, kind of like my reaction is, yeah, you know, Wesco is going to have the leg up having gone through the 15 spring practices and played in that game. But if they think this about Wesco, I can't wait to hear and see the feedback on TJ Moore. Well, Dabo alluded to it, right? Uh, we just talked about the crock pot. And obviously what he meant by that is that Brian Wesco is going to have to beat up, He's, uh, uh, beef up, excuse me. He's going to have to get in the weight room and, and add some weight to his frame. Um, Drew, I think that's the first thing that stood out to you and I when we saw Brian Wesco in Orlando at the Under Armour game. The other part about this is, you know, he's a narrow frame. Uh, he's very narrow hip, but he's got an explosive lower body. So it's going to take him a little bit of time. That being said, his short area movements, uh, his lower body explosiveness, his ability to play above the rim, I think those are all things that translate immediately. And we kind of saw that um, on Saturday in Clemson spring game. Um, Drew, the quarterbacks, uh, Klubnik, Vizina, you look at both those guys, Klubnik, 13 of 26, 158 yards, and INT, uh, Vizina. The only reason I pause on Vizina is because I heard it another pronunciation uh when i was watching the replay so now i'm a i'm a i'm a little uh mixed up there but 14 to 25 108 yards two ints we'll tie this into uh together a little bit the defensive line for clemson is is really good uh they're really like talented really, good. really really good um you got peter woods you have tamarian parker you got young guys coming on like aj hoffler as well they were wreaking havoc all day. Um, that is going to be a strength of Clemson's defense is going to be their defensive line. Ultimately, it's going to be the strength of their team uh, is their front seven. On the flip side of that, that kind of sped up the clock for Cade Klubnik, Vizina as well. And you saw those guys kind of struggle. And Klubnik had some bright spots, but there are a couple times he's still putting that ball in harm's way. He had one INT, probably could have been, it was two plays away from being three, right? Um, so I'm still pretty fascinated to kind of see kind of what that looks like on offense. Um, and the first thing that I think about is, yes, it's spring. You still have fall camp as well. But they got Georgia week one, right? And you talk about a test for Matt Luke's uh, unit and that offensive line. Um, that's going to be it. They're going to go against one of the best defensive line units in the country in Georgia. That game to me is going to be a really good gut check, barometer check uh, right out of the gates for Clemson. And what we saw early is that they got a lot of work to do uh, to get ready for the Bulldogs. 
And you brought up the name Matt Luke. I mean, we have discussed it at length in these airwaves. I think he is the long-term answer to fixing the problem based on how they're recruiting here in the 2025 cycle. Some of the guys I have committed, some of the guys that are going to take official visits uh, in June, you would think the Tigers are going to land a few of them. I I agree, uh, Coop. Uh, You want to talk about the O-line. What is the long-term outlook at quarterback for the Tigers? I mean, Cade's, Cade's the guy. Uh, he has always been kind of Dabo, uh, the golden retriever for him. But Tigers didn't take an arm in the 24 cycle. They got Blake Herbert committed in the 25 cycle. He only played one game of his junior season. We'll see what he looks like here as a senior. But for a team that doesn't use the transfer portal, I have questions about maybe not 2025, but what does that quarterback room look like in 2026, 2027, and beyond? Because uh, Vizina, or is it Vizina? Is that, is that, was that the another? I have no idea. I got I to gotta go back to the drawing board. You know what's funny about that? I mean, not trying to take away from the conversation. I've met this kid so many times. Same. And had really good conversations with him. He's a, he's a great kid. And I know he's heard me say his name before, and it's never came up. But you know what? Francis Malanoa was the same way. How long did we say his name wrong before we finally, you know, you go to an ESPN broadcast, and you're like, it's Malanoa? Um, besides the point, though, we're going to go with Vizina until we're told differently. I, I just thought it was discouraging performance from him. So, like, what what is that outlook? I mean, the best quarterback in the game was a, a walk-on from in town, the, the third stringer. I wish I knew his name. Oh, I know it because I just looked it up. Trent Pyramid, man, put some respect on his name. Um, to your point, and I mean this in all seriousness, like if I was a Clemson fan and I was looking at that game uh, just in that snapshot – Pierman can do some things, definitely on the ground, too, and he looked pretty comfortable as a passer. So um, I don't know. i got to read into that. Probably need to talk to okay. Anna Adams and kind of see all that. But do, back- do, you think, do you think there is a personnel department around the country that saw that game and that name is now on the board? Pierman? Trent Pierman? Yeah, absolutely, 110%. Um, you know, and I went back and I think only had a UAB offer. Um, Still? Dilfer. You know, and Dilfer coming out. So um, I'll say this. I don't think it was all bad for Vizina. You know, there were some things certainly that he has to clean up. He's a puppy, man. He was pretty incomplete in terms of what you saw at Briarwood C- Christian, right? He was this big, physical kid. We felt good about his ability as a runner. Um, but when we saw him in person, he left a little bit to be desired as a passer. I actually thought there were some things that he did over the weekend that were encouraging. So, you know, what I would what I would say to any Clemson fan is he needs reps. You know, he needs a lot of reps, um, and he's not going to see that with Cade Klubnik. But even getting that exposure over the weekend in that spring game is huge for him, especially going into the fall. Um, so, yeah, it's going to take some time. But I'm with you. I don't, I don't know if you're a Clemson fan sitting there and saying, all right, uh, even post Klubnik or if something were to happen to Klubnik during the season, this could all kind of fall apart very quickly, right? Um, so we'll see what happens there. Drew, your impressions of uh, five-star linebacker Sammy Brown? It's kind of hard to track him. I mean, you're not watching all 22. Uh, eight tackles and a sack. You know, you go back to the high school tape that wasn't asked to blitz a ton, so I think that's encouraging. I mean, he's going to play, right? I, did Dabo have – say anything on him of note i can't even remember uh i don't remember i think i i remember him you know he had that whether it was a sack or a batted ball or whatever it is I, obviously he is very excited about him you think about sammy brown i mean one of the most impact ready players i think of any prospect in the class last year just in terms of where he is physically i'll say this the other thing i liked him a lot more off the edge as a second level blitzer but he also has a lot more on ball ability than I think a lot of people really think about when they think about Sammy Brown. So I love him between the tackle box. It's kind of where he lives. But you see how fast he plays and how fast he triggers playing downhill. I mean, if I was Clemson, I'd find a way to kind of u- utilize him situationally uh, in the pass rush, which it seems Wes Goodwin, he's all over that. I mean, I think they're going to move him around and be pretty creative with him. Well, the comp I wanted to put on him is uh, Andrew Van Ginkle. That's who I wanted to comp him to. But then you watch the senior tape, and he's not. there was not a lot of clips of him on the edge. Now, I wish I had put that on there. <laughs> All right, any, uh, any final thoughts from Clemson? 
Uh, look, D line's good. O line, I don't know. Uh, fired up for TJ Moore. I think that sums it up. And Tavoy Fagan, freshman defensive back, picking off a pass. Yeah, you saw that one. I'm, I'm finished as a four star for us. Is Klubnik good enough to take them to the promised land? <laughs> I think they have enough top end talent. I worry about the depth at key positions. Didn't answer my question, but <laughs> I think I know what you're saying. Um, I worry about Klubnik a little bit. Like I wonder, I wonder if he's he's going to be good enough to play big enough in those spots, you know. So we'll see. I mean, between the quarterback, the offensive line, a lot of young talent at the receiver position, still got to put it together. The running back room, I don't know. I don't. I don't really have a good feel for it. Um, I don't know if they were banged up this spring or not, but we'll see with Clemson, man. They're going to be one of the more interesting teams uh, to watch. All right, Drew Auburn uh, and Cam Coleman were stealing all the headlines. Uh, over the weekend as a five-star. Uh, he got to work early. Four receptions, game high, 92 yards as well. Walker White, top 247, freshman quarterback, 5-13, 83 yards. How about this guy, Towns Magoo? Seven, on, seven for seven on field goals, long of 58. That guy can absolutely boom it. Uh, we don't talk about kickers here a lot, but that's definitely a name to know. Uh, Drew, let's start with the top five player in the country, Cam Coleman. There's been a lot of dialogue about him over the last two weeks as now he kind of uh, already hadn't taken a snap yet, but it almost feels like the country is starting to um, learn about Cam Coleman, you know, coast to coast, who this guy is and a lot of expectations uh, for him as a freshman. And, you know, we've talked about it. Auburn hasn't had a thousand yard receiver in over 20 years. Um, Cam Coleman pretty different you know it's it, it's pretty funny you get to the second half of that game and you're watching him and all of a sudden it's like he's not seeing single coverage anymore uh and if dj durkin's doing that at halftime of a spring game i would imagine cam coleman's going to get that treatment from day one uh with his collegiate career but drew uh there's no other way to say it he's he's pretty special all right so a couple thoughts here i don't know if you would agree with this i put it right away in one of our group chats he looked 15 pounds heavier. I don't know if they're shooting him up with HGH there on the planes. No, <laughs> no judgment. But if you take him at the Under Armour practices in December to when they showed him going through drills for that first part of the scrimmage, I was, I'm like, whoa. I mean, and then you remember the fact he's still 16 years old, Cooper? I think 16, 17. I mean, he is yo he's young for the grade. Yeah, he's a he's a puppy, and I I tweeted about it yesterday. Yeah, yesterday talking about just you know had less than what 550 yards receiving as a junior, uh, and then you look at his production as a senior. Uh, physical traits were always there. Um, you know, this is a guy who ran well. Uh, he jumped well. Um, you saw it on tape. The biggest thing from the junior to the senior year was. I think he really developed in terms of the route tree at all three levels. Um, and it was a guy that really kind of lived outside the numbers. And if you watch him over the weekend, that's really where he's going to make his hay is going to be in those 50, 50 jump ball situations. But at the same time, he can separate as well. Um, you know, so yeah, he's, um, he's as advertised and exactly what you thought. I think sometimes you get a little, I don't know, like at least me personally, when you rank receivers that high, I mean, you just got to feel so convicted on them, you know? Um, and then you look at this year, and I think you and I kind of talked about this, the NFL draft, it's a little bit of an outlier, you know, where you got a, a Marvin Harrison Jr. and a Malik Neighbors and a Roma Dunze, right? But, you know, for us, Jeremiah Smith, Cam Coleman, you got both those guys in the top five. And as of right now, like there's, there's no wins and, you know, spring of 2024 we'll see what this looks like three to four years from now but i mean i feel about as good uh about those two guys as i do as anybody else that we had in the top 32. well i think one of the stories of the upcoming college football season is going to be these freshman receivers and it's not just jeremiah smith and cam coleman um you know micah hudson's not going through spring practices at texas tech but joey mcguire keeps hinting okay he is going to play as a true freshman uh steve sarkeesian at texas talking up ryan wingo we already went over bryant wesco i think it's a generational group i really really do uh josiah trader and i car at miami 
A lot of guys turning some heads, and I think that'll be a theme of the season. And it's going to be spearheaded by Jeremiah Smith and, and Cam Coleman. But go back to this this past year in college football. Who were the the top freshman receivers? It was Kevin Concepcion, who wasn't a high profile guy. It was Eric Singleton at or uh, at Georgia Tech, not really a high profile guy. I, I think that is going to be. We're going to be a month into the season, and these guys are are going to be making making plays and. You see the clips from Cam Coleman. You see the clips from Jeremiah Smith, and it's like, yeah, we saw them do this in pads as seniors. We saw it at the All-Star setting. Cam Coleman, I think it was day two, day three of Under Armour practices. It was a, it was an acrobatic act. It was like, what can't he do in, in terms of catch radius, catching anything in his zip code? So, And then he lays out for that 50-yard gain to start the Auburn spring game. I mean, that's a big boy catch. Yeah, and I think we all we often get the question of like, all right, where do you get the conviction or the validation of you know how comfortable you feel when you have to finally stamp uh, that last top two four seven? And for us, Drew, I mean that comes from a good on good setting in these All Star events, right? Whether it's the All American Bowl, whether it's the Under Armour All America game, whether it's Alabama Mississippi, is you get to see good on good uh, and Cam Coleman all week in Orlando, just from a competitive temperament standpoint and disposition, uh, the way that he competed. Um, and there were no 50-50 balls, right? It was more 90-10. Uh, so I think, I think you need to add on here. I don't think Cam Coleman actually caught a pass in the actual game, in the, in the Under Armour game, which is why everyone wonders, okay, why do you guys go to practice? Why do you write these updates? You know, we, you say it's one evaluation point. Yeah, it's a week-long evaluation point in the process. It's not just one individual set. Like, I don't think Cam Coleman got to pass that game. How many receptions did Jeremiah Smith have in the All-American Bowl, right? Two. So, same deal. Um, you know, um, other guys that I'm thinking about, like you brought up T.J. Moore. I think T.J. Moore is going to be the name that kind of um, – you know, is going to arrive and, and make a lot of people uh, really excited across college football. You think about T.J. Moore, Brian Wesco, you think about the Clemson of old, what they've had at the receiver position. Um, all right, Drew, we talked about Clemson. We talked about Auburn. And uh, how about NC State? They were in action over the weekend. I did not get to watch this one, but you texted me some good things from the freshman, Cedric Bailey, the quarterback out of the Florida area, and then Terrell Anderson as well. Late riser for us in the top 247. NC State ends up uh, edging out Georgia there for his services. And, Drew, we're pretty excited not only about Cedric Bailey, but you think about NC State, that receiving core. Uh, you brought up Kevin Concepcion. You got Terrell Anderson. You got Noah, Noah Rogers, Jalen Paler, right, another guy uh, that we really like. So NC State. Uh, influx of some young talent there to be really uh, hopeful about. I'm sipping the Wolfpack Kool-Aid. <laughs> I don't know if it's because they were in the Final Four. I mean, but what a weekend if you're an NC State fan. You had uh, the women's Final Four, spring game, and then the men's Final Four. Um, Terrell Anderson, kind of, he is what he is what he we thought he is, and I don't know if he's going to be a guy year one for them. Uh, just given that collection of talent. But the story for me in this game, Cedric Bailey, who was Jeremiah Smith's uh, high school quarterback back there at Chaminade Madonna Prep, uh, decorated career. I thought he got better each season uh, and came up big for the Lions in a nationally televised game against Miami Central. That's when uh, I think it was JoJo Trader had a one-handed catch. I mean, uh, he had a 67-yard run. Uh, for uh, I don't think he got in the end zone, and I know it's kind of two hand touch with the quarterbacks, but even if it was full contact, he was still going for 50 yards. I thought it was a really encouraging performance for him. He finished as a high three star for us. You know, there's some conversation about him making a four, earning that fourth star. I think NC State that's their quarterback of the future, and it was funny. I don't know who was calling the game. They were like, I, I dug into this kid's film, and I loved his release, and I. I think it's unconventional. I would go the other way, but he can spin it. He can get the job done. And uh, them getting him on campus for spring practices was a big deal, right? You got Grayson McCall this upcoming year. I think they're going to make a push. And then Cedric Bailey, kind of the guy of the future. Yeah, live arm, long frame, right? When you talk about the developmental upside, some of those guys you just don't know in a very positive way, right? If, if they can put it together. Cedric Bailey, I believe, drew over 70% completion rate last year. 
helps when you're throwing the ball to uh, the number one player in the country, uh, not to mention JoJo Trader too, right? Well, yeah, the other thing is, you know, he would run a little bit at Shamanad Madonna, but there was never a 70-yard run in the arsenal. Last line of my scouting report on him was like, athletic profile suggests he could always get a look at tight end. And, you know, some people might think that's a, a swipe at him. I, I was just trying to hint that we haven't seen the athlete be the athlete on the field. And, and now we're seeing a little bit of it at NC State. Oh,